you can't have a consistent, sustained, successful program uh, without um, an administration that's not only aligned in, <clears throat> in terms of what you want to accomplish, but they're aligned in terms of uh, what you, you know, the way you want to go about it. Mainly not just what you want to do, but how you want to get there. And um, everybody at LMU uh, is pulling the rope in the same direction, and that's been the biggest reason why we've been able to have that, that run of success over the years. Um, I also want to thank uh, our players. I'm not one of those guys that's uh, dumb enough or crazy enough to think I'm sitting up here because of me. Um, I'm, I'm up here because uh, I've been blessed to coach uh, uh, players throughout the last 13 years um, that have not only been talented, but, man, uh, you know, competitive and committed and unselfish, uh, high-character people that have uh, formed teams that have gone on to achieve and accomplish uh, some remarkable things over the years. Um, and so I'm forever appreciative of them, all the hard work they've done. And again, uh, players win games, and no one's had it better than me in terms of the quality of not just the player, but the people I've been able to coach uh, the last 13 years. And, and this group um, that I'm coaching now, um, with everything going on around it, I think just exemplifies, you know, the program, the kind of people I'm around that, you know, easy to lay down given these circumstances. And these guys just won the, the Southeast Regional Championship and are playing the Elite Eight in Evansville. Uh, next week, so that shows you all you need to know about the kind of character, kind of heart uh, those those kids have, the kind of toughness that they have. So I'm incredibly, uh, incredibly grateful and indebted to those people, and couldn't respect, love our our, our players and former players anymore. So um, in terms of, <clears throat> for me, in terms of this program and what we want to do, um, you know, we want to build a program, develop a program that everybody associated uh, can be proud of. And that's that's the goal. Um, whether that's as an administrator, as a, as a player, as a coach, uh, as a fan, we want to put something together that everybody uh, that's a part of it uh, is, proud, is proud of. Um, and I think, you know, I think they want a group that <clears throat> we want to be a group that performs and represents Indiana State well uh, in the classroom, on the court, and in the community. And we want to excel in those areas. Um, and I think, uh, you know, I also think, you know, it's, it's going to, it's going to take a little time, and I appreciate everybody's, you know, uh, patience and support as, as we build it. Um, but, you know, we're, we're here. I'm not here to uh, build a great team. I'm here to build a program. And we want to build something that's going to last. And when you do that, you got to have a big picture perspective. And, um, you know, we're certainly going to try to build something special here uh, in, in Terre Haute and, um, you know, uh, put together a program, like I said, that's, that's built to last. And, um, you know, I'll say on this, um, you know, the press conference, I told Sherrard this, you know, the press conference is kind of like the wedding day. You know, it's filled with uh, hope and uh, everything's going to be perfect and it's going to be this just, you know, long and great journey with no adversity and no difficulties ahead. And um, what happens after the press conference is the same thing that happens after the wedding day, the marriage. And that's the, the promise and commitment over time. And um, I know, you know, today is what it is, but hopefully... Um, you know, I'll show myself worthy of the commitment and promise over time to build something special here that, again, everybody associated with this program will be proud of and happy to be a part of. Um, I'm incredibly indebted to the people and the special people and great people I've been able to work with at LMU over the last 13 years, and I'm looking forward to working with the great people here at Indiana State uh, moving forward. So with that, I'm happy to take any questions anybody may have. Media, please uh, introduce yourself, your affiliate, and then... Uh if you have questions, please raise your hand. Um, Josh, uh, Todd Goldman with the Terre Haute Tribune Star. Um, tell me about when Indiana State became the place for you. When did you identify that this is uh, where you wanted to continue your own coaching journey? Yeah, well, I think, you know, I had a, a chance to have a conversation with Sherrard, and, and um, you know, I've had some opportunities, um, you know, to, to become a head coach Division One prior to this, and they weren't the right fit. And um, I was, as Sherrard mentioned, you know, I was, I was extremely happy where I was. Um, I was in a great institution and, and, and supported and empowered to, to do my job. The only reason um, that, that I was going to leave uh, – would have been to come to a work environment that was going to be as you know committed and supportive and empower me, and uh, had to have a similar type of work environment that I was used to, and then the opportunity to really challenge and and stretch myself as a coach. And um, when you look at the Missouri Valley, the coaches, the programs, the teams in this league, um, this is an opportunity for me to I think be in a similar work environment to what I'm used to, but also a chance to really. 
uh, challenge myself as a coach and grow, and that's that's how you get better. And so I'm I'm looking forward to that, and I think it was it was the combination of those things. And you know, I also I, I look I'm not naive. I understand the the challenges uh, at Indiana State, but also I think understand the opportunities. And it's it's like when you look at a player, you can fixate on what they can't do, or you can focus on what they can do. And um, you know we're gonna we're focused here on the things that we can do and the opportunities that we do have. And um, you know I just felt like talking to Sherard, talking to Dr. Curtis. Um, you know I knew on my end, like I said, it was gonna be a, a bit of a leap of faith to leave something I'm very comfortable with. But you know they made a, s a similar commitment, and uh, you know and so and, and and so I think we're we're looking forward to this. And I I, I just felt like it was the right fit. And so much of it, as you said, is. You know what? What is the right fit for you? This job fits me in terms of uh, I think the things I do well, and and I think we'll be able to. Uh, uh, my skill set would would be good here. As part of that, was there a moment where you said to yourself, you know, was there that magic moment where it clicked in your head, like, yep, this is the fit for me? Was there any any uh, moment of epiphany like that in in your own thought process? <sighs> No, I think you know it. It, uh, it was it was it was a short courting process. It wasn't really long. Um, I think you know my, my conversations. I had a couple conversations with Sherard, and I think just over time, um, you know, kind of felt right to me. Um, the opportunity, like I said, to to coach at this level. Um, you know, I, like I said, I have unbelievable respect uh, for the Missouri Valley Conference, the coaches. You look at you know the teams in this league, the history and tradition. Obviously, there's there's um, great history here as well, but um, it, it was it was kind of all those things. The biggest thing I was concerned with um, was, you know, the work environment, being somewhere that uh, was, was going to be supportive, that was uh, process oriented, that understands, you know, hey, there's going to be, you know, look, I'm I know as a coach, you know, when you win, uh, you're the greatest thing ever, and when you lose, uh, everybody wants to fire you. So that's fine, um, but I was more concerned with. What was, the temp what was Sherrard's temperament? What was Dr. Curtis's expectations? Uh, you know, I'm a very much a process-driven guy. I'm a day-by-day -day guy, and I wanted to work somewhere that understood that process that was going to be, you know, stick with you because it's not, you're not going to win every game. Uh, you're not going to have win the league every year. You're not going to, you know, win the national championship every year. So uh, you got to have people that are, that are bought into you and what you're going to bring. doesn't mean there's not expectations or standards. doesn't mean you hold this job forever, but... Um, I wanted to be somewhere that was, that was process-driven and surrounded by people with the right temperament uh, to handle everything uh, that's gonna be, that, will, you know, that will occur over this, this, this time. So uh, talking with Sherrard and, and, and Dr. Curtis, I felt comfortable that, um, it, but that, that wasn't an epiphany. It was just kind of over time I started to feel like this was the right fit and um, eventually got to where I was, you know, agreed to come on board. Hey, Coach, uh, Rick Simmon from WTHI-TV. Just hearing what you have to say, uh, you seem like a coach who just loves a challenge. How much are you embracing wanting to turn the Sycamore program into a, uh, a powerhouse in, in the NBC and in, in college basketball? Yeah, I think, you know, that's, that's the hope. You know, you come in and, and um, you know, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm a very much a, a process-oriented person, like I said. I'm, I'm um, you know, the, the goal's obvious. You want to build a, again, build a program here that lasts, build something that, uh, uh, is special, develop a culture, um, it takes time, and, and, and that's the thing, you know, it's, it's not going to be an overnight, you know, come in and, and, and do something and, and snap your fingers and everything's good, so um, I'm going to show up, work as hard as I can every single day, <clears throat> I think to, to do that, you know, to, to build a program that can compete at the top of Missouri Valley, can get the NCAA tournament that can advance, um, you know, it, it's all about the type of people you surround yourself with, right, I mean, as, as a coach, um, I'm completely dependent upon uh, the the competence and character of the people I surround myself with, staff, players, um, you, you're completely dependent on that. Um, I always say, you know, people say, oh, you know, you got this bad program and you, you know, you bring in the coach, going to fix everything. It's like, you know, changing drivers to fix a flat tire, right? Like it doesn't work, uh, you know. And, and so this program is, is not, you know, is, like I said, I'm as, as a great foundation, uh, you know, Coach Lansing and, and his staff and those players that were here, obviously, uh, you know, built a wonderful foundation. And so now it's, it's on us to go out and, and, and you know, I got to be myself and we got to do it, you know, the way, the way we see fit. But we're going to try to, um, so I'm going I'm to surround myself with as good of people as we can. We're going to work as hard as we possibly can. We're going to give everything we have uh, to do this, do this the right way, build a high level program with high character kids that, again, represent, uh, you know, the, the kind of program we want to be. And um, I don't think you have to sacrifice 
in any of those areas, and I think you can do that uh, at Indiana State. <coughs> Josh, doing my research, uh, one of the things that came out uh, that you uh, had took a lot of pride in was the concept of Kaizen, and uh, how does that inform your coaching philosophy and your program philosophy, and kind of explain that uh, to people, how that's been uh, important to your success at Lincoln Memorial? Yeah, no, um, <coughs> that's a, uh, that's kind of the, the, the core of, of who I am, you know, uh, Kaizen is a, a Japanese word uh, that means commitment to continual improvement. Um, you know, we want as our program, uh, I tell my guys every year, they probably get sick of hearing it, but if we be known for one thing, it's a team that embraces the growth process. Uh, constantly coming in, trying to put your signature on your work every single day, being the best you can be. I think when you focus your attention <coughs> on your efforts and your growth as opposed to results or things that are out of your control, I think it's a really fulfilling way to, to, to live. I think it's a fulfilling way to coach and fulfilling way to play. Um, you know, we try not to, to deal with, with outcomes as much. We try to focus on the process of what it takes to achieve those outcomes, right? Do our, do our behaviors and do our daily commitments line up with, with what we're trying to accomplish? And we hold each other accountable to that. But that, that commitment to growth process, I think, is, is important. You don't get too high when things are going well. And you don't get too low when things are going bad because the reality of a situation is if you've won 10 in a row, the key to winning number 11 is to get in, get to work, prepare, and get, get ready for the next opponent. And if you've lost 10 in a row, uh, the key is to get in, get to work, and get better and prepare for your next opponent. And it allows you to stay focused on what's important, um, not be overly moved or overreactionary to, to success or failure. And, um, you know, we, uh, we've been really fortunate. I think we... Uh, Last year, you know, we had a 32-game winning streak when the pandemic hit going to the NCAA tournament. But we've had uh, in season, I think, five winning streaks of 20 or more, you know, in the same season and uh, over the last decade. And, you know, I think a lot of that has been attributed to our guys buying into that Kaizen. Whether we win or we lose, um, you know, it doesn't really affect our focus or our preparation. We come in, uh, we, we lock into where we can get better. We lock into areas we can grow. We go out and we try to, you know, practice at a high level. We always talk about, you know, doing the, con you know, the George Washington quote, do common things in an uncommon way and you'll capture the attention of the world. Uh, everybody does the same things. Everybody in the Missouri Valley has, you know, 13 scholarships and practices and strength coaches and coaches paid to win and everybody does the same stuff. Scouting, there's, there's no difference. You just got to do those common things in an uncommon way. And I think Kaizen kind of informs everything for us relative to, you know, focusing on our growth and not being as caught up uh, reactionary to results. Hey, Josh, Grant here at WTO. I was going to ask if you met with the team yet, what was maybe some of the messages you look to build, certainly start building your program in a, in a crazy time right now as you're juggling two head coaching gigs. Yeah, I'm not even sure I can do one, but not let alone two. So, uh, but no, I did get to meet with the team last night um, and uh, really just was, was me kind of letting them know, um, look, I, I understand. I, I left, I said this yesterday, you know, I left a group of, of kids that were, um, were heartbroken uh, because I was leaving in the morning. And I walked into a locker room last night with a group of kids that are heartbroken because I'm there, uh, you know. So, um, you know, so, so it's, it's going to take time. Um, and they've got to get to know me. I'm not, one, I'm not a person that thinks that uh, because I walk in and I'm the head coach that, that automatically entitles me to their respect or their trust, right? I mean, I have to earn that uh, from the players. I've got to earn that from the administration, the community, the people around. I don't think that anybody owes me anything because of, of my title. And I told them, you know, I'm, I'm going to, you know, our, our program is going to be focused on them. Everybody's, the culture here is helping those guys be the best possible version of themselves. We talked about our commitment uh, and our goal, uh, you know, from a programmatical standpoint is that, uh, each one of those guys is more successful in life for having been a part of our program. And we really want to help them be the best possible versions of themselves relative to their personal development, their academic growth, <coughs> um, you know, in terms of career development, finding out what they want to do, and then the, the basketball component. So, um, you know, it was just kind of an overview of, of what we want. You know, culture is people. It's not, you know, Kaizen's been a part of our culture. Uh, hopefully it'll be a part of Indiana State's culture, but your culture is, is never slogans or signs. It's, it's the fiber of the people in the room, right? So, um, you know, we, we just talked about the kind of culture we hope to build, that we want to do this the right way with high character guys. Um, and, and again, you know, my, I, I told them, you know, we're not going to skip any steps. You know, I read one time the longest 
distance between two points is a shortcut, right? So, um, you know, we're not going to shortcut. We're not going to skip any steps. Uh, we're going we're gonna to work to put together something that, 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 is, that can last, that's special. And, again, it's going to come down to the people. And I, I also told them um, look, I'm a relationship guy. Uh, but, you know, with this group, the guys that stay are going to have to kind of live by faith and not by sight, right? I mean, because you're not going to have time in the next whatever to build the relationships before they got to make their decisions if they're going to come back or go. So hopefully um, some of those guys will, will live by faith and not by sight. But I do know uh, that we're going to get this right with people that are bought in to, to me, to what we want to build here, to our program. And, uh, you know, so we, we certainly are open arms welcoming people back, but understand that everybody's got a choice and that they didn't come in to play for me. And we'll, uh, um, you know, whatever their decisions are, we'll respect those and, uh, and we'll move forward and put together the best possible uh, uh, team we are we can for this year without shortcutting or circumventing any steps. You, uh, you mentioned talking, putting the team together. A lot of questions about your coaching staff. Can you confirm that if, if Kareem is staying on? Also, I've been told a lot of Valley guy here, Matthew Graves, could be joining your coaching staff. Uh, a little small half there from you. I don't know what you can and cannot confirm at this point. Yeah. Um, I'm <clears throat> sorry. I'm losing my voice with coaching and everything else on the phone 24 hours a day, uh, trying to put together a staff. Um, Kareem is, is going to stay on. Um, he's agreed to stay on, and we're excited about that. Um, you know, so we're, yeah, sure. <clears throat> um, you know, I think, uh, and I can't comment outside of that, but you, obviously uh, you guys do your research, but we want to put together uh, a great staff. And, um, you know, we, I know that um, – there's going to be a steep learning curve for me coming up to the Missouri Valley, and I want to surround myself with people that can expedite that learning curve, expedite my learning curve as it relates to Indiana State, expedite my learning curve as it relates to the Missouri Valley, and I'm going to, uh, you know, have to do my part in terms of once our season's over, uh, diving in and studying and studying this roster and studying uh, the Valley in general so I can be up to speed. But the more people I can surround myself with that have been at this level, have had success at this level, have been head coaches at this level, um, the better. Uh, I'm not one of those people that's, you know, threatened by any of that stuff. I want to get my, the best staff we can possibly get, get the best people we can possibly get, and get guys that are aligned in my vision, my conversations with Kareem. I feel like, um, you know, he's, he's on board. He understands, you know, uh, what we want to do, and he's going to be uh, a great resource for me. I think he's going to uh, – um, you know, help me to understand and, and build relationships quicker with these guys. He understands the league and what's worked, and uh, he's obviously done a, a tremendous job and has a, you know, a great, you know, uh, career and track record uh, in this business. And, and uh, we'll, we'll finish our staff off here. I think we're, we're closer um, than, than farther away. I think we're, we're, we're pretty close to getting it done, but um, as soon as we're allowed to, uh, which is basically whenever Sherrard and Angie tell me we're allowed to, we'll announce uh, some, the rest of those. Yeah. Angie tells me, yeah, whenever Angie tells me that I can do it, I'll, I'll announce it. But it, it shouldn't be long. Josh, we've uh, heard a lot about how you want to build the program. What is your basketball philosophies? Uh, you know, doing some research again, uh, I, I've noted that you've embraced uh, some of the modern analytical things that are being done to tell everybody about uh, how your teams play. Well, we try to play with, you know, offensively. Um, I think you always have to build it to, to what you, you know, the, the talent you have, the people you have. Obviously, having been at, at, at LMU for 13 years, you know, you're able to, to really put together a roster that, that fits, you know, how you want to play. Um, hopefully, we'll be able to do the same thing here, you know, for this 21-22 season. But um, we always look at and talk about, you know, you, you tweak it and adjust it every single year. And, and you, my job is to help that group, whatever it is, soar with their strengths. So, um, but I do think <clears throat> we have certain uh, non-negotiables. We want to play fast. I think, uh, I know everybody says that in press conferences, so I'll be a meme forever with, you know, we're going to have great kids, we're going to play fast. But hopefully there's some empirical evidence to that in terms of what we've been able to do at, at LMU. Um, but we do want to play with, with great pace. I think we want to play an entertaining style. Our guys share the ball. Um, you look at our team this year. Uh, we're averaging, I think, about 92, 93 points a game, um, which is, I think, the fifth or sixth year in a row we've averaged over 90. Um, lead the country in assists up there. I think either lead the country, first, second country in threes and threes attempted. And, um, 
And so it's, it's, it's a fun style of play. It's, it's a style of play that requires a lot of skill, but we play with, with great pace. <clears throat> and I think probably the, the underrated aspect uh, would be the defensive end, right? Everybody talks about offense, but basketball really ties together. And if you're um, a bad defensive team, it's hard to be a good offensive team because you're taking the ball to the net every single time. So that's not good. Uh, hard to be efficient when you're doing that. So um, we've, the 13 years I've been at LMU, uh, we've ranked number one in our league in field goal defense every year, led the nation, uh, I think four or five times in field goal defense. And while we've had, you know, lead the country in assists and, and threes and all that stuff, 90 plus points, I think we're top five in the nation in field goal percentage defense this year. And that's our, our backbone. You know, that's the, the foundational piece of our program. Everybody always you know, wants to know what the best team builder you can do. You know, can you take in the play putt-putt or some ropes course? The best team builder you can do is, is get good at something hard and get good at getting good at defense is the best team builder out there. So, um, you know, because the, the amount of communication and trust it requires to, to become a lead at that. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll certainly try to play with great pace. We'll certainly try to play unselfishly. It'll be probably a little bit different, um, not better or worse than anything that, that's out there. Um, but we'll, we'll be positionless if we can. Um, we'll have a lot of guys that can handle and pass. Our two uh, leaders in assists this year are six six small forwards. Um, our point guard is, doesn't have nearly as good a feel as our small forwards, and our center uh, in the regional final made ten threes. You know, he's not a post-up guy. He's a three-point shooter, and you just acclimate to the talent you have. You try to put them in positions to do what they do best and uh, let them soar their strengths. But we'll have non-negotiables. We'll try to make sure that um, you know, that, that we, we move the ball, that we play together, that we're disciplined in our shot selection, that we take care of the ball, and that we're as elite as we can be uh, on the defensive end. Uh, congratulations. My name is Melvin L. Burks. And I would like to know, as being a citizen and serving of the community, what can we do to support you to be successful? That's a great question. <clears throat> I appreciate that, Melvin. Um, you know, I would, I would say um, just coming out and, 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 and supporting our program, you know, just, just really, you know, uh, cheering our guys on. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run a, a transparent program. We're going to welcome in, you know, to, to practice, uh, you know, people that want to be a part of it. And, um, you know, hopefully, as, uh, you know, to the games as well, once COVID's gone, obviously, once we're, we're through this. But um, just, just really trying to support us, support our players, um, be positive about what we're trying to do. Uh, we want everybody um, in and around the program uh, working and, and, and trying to be pulling that rope in the same direction. So um, just just really coming out, cheering our guys on. Um, you know, if there's other stuff, I mean, we'll, we'll certainly uh, let you know. We want our guys to – one thing we do want to do <clears throat> as we get, as we get uh, into this is we want to utilize all of our resources when our guys graduate to help them with their next step in life. And uh, I know we got some, some great people in this room that are – uh, you know, have accomplished tremendous things in the, you know, business-wise. We want to help and, and help utilize that in terms of um, propelling our guys for when they graduate, walk across that stage, and getting on to the next step in their life. And, again, getting people into the Holman Center and supporting our kids through, through the good times to come and, and the difficult times to come, um, you know, creating an atmosphere in the, in the community that recruits see that, hey, there's a great vibe about Indiana State basketball, and, and this is a place that there's a lot of people that care and support it. I think those are things that everybody can do to, to help us uh, bring in the kind of, uh, not only the players, but the kind of uh, character that we need to, to build something that, that again, that, that you guys will want to come out and support. Sherrod, uh, circling back a little bit uh, to the original question I had for Josh, from your point of view, and in working with the search firm, what, how did this process go to where you zeroed in on to the moment where Josh was your guy and the guy you wanted to offer the job to? How did, from Indiana State's point of view, uh, what was that, how did that process play out? Thanks, Todd. Well, like a lot of athletic directors, you always have a, uh, I call it a little black book of uh, if there's any changes, you have people that you keep in mind. I don't care if it's, you know, our great coach and, and, and Mitch Hannitz or if it's anybody else, you always got to make sure you have somebody that you have a, a list. And he was always on that list, um, you know, after on, 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 the, um, um, on Monday, when we uh, decided to, to go to go a different direction, um, me and the uh, the uh, search associate got together and, and put together that list and began making calls and everything like that. And um, certainly, uh, Josh's record uh, separated him with regards to what he's accomplished. But like I said earlier, fit really matters more than anything to me. 
Um, I think that a lot of athletic directors try to win the, um, um, the, the press conference, but to me, you have to know exactly the, the environment, what you're dealing with, and, and how do you adapt. And uh, certainly from my conversations with him, um, we, 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 qu we quickly progressed on we, that we were alike in a lot of different ways and um, the, the challenges that we face and, and some of the successes that we would have in the future, we, we agreed on those and, um, and went, went forward, so. Uh, just short as a follow-up to that, you know, a lot of times we talk about how the, the coach molds his way to the program that he's taking over. How does the program mold its way to the coach? How does Indiana State give Josh the things that he needs to uh, succeed and to do the things the way he wants to do it? Yeah, it goes, it g again, it goes, uh, I believe, into, um, you know, for us to be able to have someone that we can work with. I mean, it's, it's a, it's a two-way street. Um, you know, just like every coach that's in here knows that I'm going to do everything that I can to support them, and all of them will tell you that. Um, you know, our staff w does everything that we can with, with, within our budget and with fundraising to support our staff, and, and, and Josh is going to be no different. Uh, so, you know, again, it goes back to the fit. You know, he comes from a place where, you know, he's had an awful lot. He understands um, um, what we're going to have to face going forward, and uh, he embraces that. And uh, myself and our staff will do all we can to provide him the support that he needs to be able to mold the program in the way that he envisions it and, and go forward. Any other questions from the media? Okay, that will wrap up our press conference. Media members, we have one-on-ones available with both Sherrod and with Coach. Um, donor sponsors, supporters, we have a little area over on the west side. You can take a walk around part of the new Holman Center because most of you haven't been in here yet. But we appreciate you. We appreciate your support. Coach, welcome to Terre Haute. Thank you. Thank so much. you.